So the first thing I did this morning was spray out the color. So I've got that color in the can over there, the aerosol can, and I did spray it out. I put a little bit of clear coat over it as well. And that color is, it's a pass. Like it's not perfect. We are going to blend it. If I had to go edge to edge here, I probably would run with that color. Like it's not terrible. Um, it's maybe a little bit on the dark and orange side. If I was at work and I had the access to a full tinting bank, I probably would give it a little bit more pearl just to brighten it up a little bit. But we'll run with that for, the, for today's purpose. You can see when you come down here, it is a little bit on the dark side. So um, yeah, pretty important to check your color before you go and spray. The last thing you want to do is go and uh, spray the color and then find out that it's terrible and you're going to have to redo the job. So I just did that on a uh, spray out card, on a applicator. Just got a few um, rags here, just t-shirt rags, got them in a big bag. And I've got my multi-purpose thinner, so this is basically like an acrylic thinner, really. It's like $17 for that can, for a litre. Pretty cheap. Now, this car here isn't like, the panel's not dirty. It's not uh, covered in dirt and grime and all that kind of thing. So I'm just going to clean it down with a bit of wax and grease remover. Um, if it was dirty and there was um, dust and stuff all over it, um, I would clean it down with a bit of water. Um, you could even mix that water with a bit of uh, methylated spirits or something like that. That's called denatured alcohol in the US. Oh, or wax and grease remover, whatever you like to call it, in your neck of the woods. So this is also going to clean these trims down so that when I go to mask them up as to avoid damage it's going to stick as well. I actually haven't even washed this car since I gave it a detail. So as I mentioned in the first video I'm going to do my best to speed this video up as not to waste too much of your time but also still want to include as much and all information as necessary so that in future you guys will be able to carry out similar repairs at home. As I did mention in the previous video I would highly recommend looking into getting a compressor and using some two-pack paints for this kind of work because you will possibly run into some uh, issues when using aerosol acrylic spray cans especially when you go to spray over the top of it later if you do decide you're not quite happy with it you can get some reactions with the acrylic paint underneath all right so i've mastered surrounding trims just to stop from damage with my sandpaper now the purpose of this video is to do it with minimal tools and we're just going to be doing all the sanding just by hand with blocks. So we're not going to be using any orbital sanders. I actually don't have an orbital sander here at home. I've got one at work but it's an air powered one and I don't have a compressor here at home. So in coming videos I'm actually going to get a small compressor and see how we go just spraying single panels with it. So that's something to um, yeah, look forward to and stay tuned to the channel for those kind of videos. Anyway. Let's get into the prep work on this one. In a bit of a sand back, and you know what? I've actually just found a bit of a high spot here. So that's easily enough fixed. <clears throat> I've got a hot air gun over here, and we'll give that a heat up and a push down. Now this is like $25. That's just about us. There goes the high spot. So that, that high spot's down. Any further imperfections will pick up with the block. Properly scuffed inside there. Okay, so that's the worst of our damage. This is really a very minor repair here. Um, I might give these a bit of a scuff back as well. 
If I was doing this at work, I would just have my orbital sander just buzzing that down and I'd get this done a lot quicker at work. But hey, I'm at home, I'm not in any great deal of a rush. So just using that 320 grit to get rid of the roughness of this touch up they've done. I laugh sometimes, you'll see big touch ups like this um, and there might be one or two tiny little chips underneath there. And it's starting to look like that's exactly the case here. There's probably barely any need for these big touch ups to even be there. So yeah, this sandpaper is not the greatest. If you do go and get this kind of sandpaper, maybe take into account that you're going to need a little bit more because it's not the best quality, but it is cheap. Alright, so what I want to do now is give the whole thing a scuff down some fine sandpaper and a bit of water. So as I mentioned before we've got a bit of a range of sand sandpapers here. I might just go 1500, cut a bit of that in half and we'll just get all this prep work done here. And that way it's going to show up any stone chips and we can fix the stone chips at the same time as we do our little repair there. So 1500 is not going to cut through the clear in any hurry, but it's also going to be good to clear coat over the top of and blend over the top of. And I've got this little um, water sprayer, just going to save me from having a bucket and too much water. So what I've decided to do with the footage on this is all of the raw footage is actually going to get uploaded onto my raw channel. I'm actually basically talking you guys through the entire job on camera but I did decide to edit it down quite a lot for the main channel so be sure to go over and check out my The Gunman Raw channel if you would like to see full unedited version of this video. Anyway continuing on with the job so first up you've obviously seen me mask the surrounding panels I've then gone and hit the affected areas like the repair areas with some coarser sandpaper I think I was using some 320 in this instance now depending on the extent of the damage you may want to use some coarser sandpaper to uh, rip right into it you might have to sand some high spots out in the plastic you may have to do uh, more filler repairs you may even need to do more heating up of the plastic with your heat gun and pushing out but yeah it's all going to be dependent on the kind of damage that you're fixing um, the reason I did decide to sand the entire area before applying my filler was because what you see me doing here is actually putting some filler in a few stone chips so there's no use in mixing your fine filler or your filler up two times um, one time for your pair and then an extra time for the stone chips I just decided it was going to be easier to do it all at once and then once I've got the filler on I've just got my heat gun yes that thing was on special down there at super cheap it was $25 so hard to beat uh, at that price you know and why wouldn't you get one it does speed the process up a little bit um, I will say that this uh, filler is more of a rough filler the septone body filler I got I did have a look through the range they had it super cheap but it didn't appear that they actually had like a proper fine filler that's like a, a glazing putty type thing it's more just a rough filler like something that you would really usually put a couple of coats of two-pack primer over something that you would expect to get a few pinholes in it's not quite as fine as the stuff that I use at work all the time I use the Evercoat easy sand and it's got yeah basically no pinholes in it it's really easy to sand as the name says 
and uh, yeah, much higher quality than this stuff. So it's one of those things that obviously your career sprayers, your spray painters out there, they're going to be looking at this and thinking, oh, you know, those uh, materials are really bad. And look, you're probably right. Like, they're not terrible. They do get the job done. Um, if you guys do hang around until the last video in this series, you'll see that I'm able to get some reasonable results. And look, at the end of the day, this video isn't aimed at your career sprayers. It's aimed at people who just want to fix a couple of scuffs and dings and you know, damage on their car on the cheap just with some aerosol cans. I would just like to let you guys know that Painting can be relatively easy once you've got the experience, but there is many variables, there's many things that can go wrong. You might look at this video and think, oh, that's easy, but then you could actually get in there and find when something goes wrong, you may not actually have the experience to know how to fix it. All right, so I've got it all cleaned down with wax and grease remover, and I'm going to give it a mask up now. So that's all dry. The repair's feeling nice and smooth, so it should only really need one or two coats of primer, I'll give that a quick heat gun. And I chose a primer that's going to be a good ground hurt. So this colour here, the um, the red should cover quite well over that beigey colour. And yeah, let's get into the masking. So you probably noticed I actually finished all my sanding off wet. Now you don't want to do what I did. I actually forgot to get some scotch bright and I also forgot to get tack rags. So make sure you add that to your shopping list. I mean, I managed to get by without both of those products. So it does go to show that you can still get by without them, but I would definitely recommend getting yourself some gray scotch bright. Yes, the color does actually matter. Um, or scotch pads, so grey scotch bright and tack cloths. So that's going to help clean all the dust off the panel before you actually start spraying. Now, I wouldn't usually wet sand a panel down these days, but this was really aimed at your DIY person. Now, being a plastic bumper bar, if you dry sand plastic parts, it's got a tendency to go on fur up. Now, you're not actually meant to wet sand body filler, but you can as long as you get all of that water out. So, I did wet sand where the plastic had broken through those little black spots and the filler as well with 800, but then I did make sure I got the heat gun on there to dry it out completely so that's us edge mask quite easy there not really a big job I've just gone off the bottom lip here no one's gonna see down there mask all these trims up I've taken a bit of extra care along here to get that tape up underneath so that we don't get any overspray on the inside of the headlight there I'm gonna do a bit of a false edge over the lip there and then we'll mask through there and we'll fade the clear out but yeah, coming along nicely, getting there, getting there, just a bit of plastic now. Another thing worth keeping in mind with your masking is that lots of masking films, especially the cheap ones, and this one included, they don't actually have a treated side to them. So the one that I use at work, the ones that you'll see me use in uh, most of my videos, that actually has a treated side to it. One side of that will actually grab the paint. So once you've sprayed over it, the paint isn't going to start flaking off. However, as you will see later in this video, where I started to put my primer on, it was all flaking off the plastic. So yeah, another way to get around that would be even just use pieces of paper or something like that. Anything that the uh, paint isn't going to go and flake off of. So that's our masking stage done. I'm going to get a little bit of primer over this spot here and I might put a little, just a tiny bit over there. I'm not going to worry about masking this job up separately for primer and for paint. I'm just going to uh, clean off, if there is say a little bit of overspray when I'm putting it here, if a little bit comes up, I've got a couple of options, either slight thinner's rag carefully, or we can even just scuff it off. If it's a very small amount, we can just scuff it off with some um, 1500 grit or something like that. But the prep work's looking pretty nice. There is a few little shiny spots here and there, but um, the whole thing is sanded down rather well. Um, it would have been nice to have had a little bit of grey scotch bright, but yeah, don't forget your grey scotchy if you're doing this at home. It would make your prep work a lot easier. So this is what I'm using, just an acrylic primer filler, beige colour obviously. I'm gonna give it a good shake up.
and we'll get that heat gun again in between coats. I reckon we just put two coats on, but we'll just monitor it, have a look at how it's looking, and have a yeah, crap right here. Okay, so I've got that 1K primer down, and one thing I did notice is that this masking film that I've got is not specifically made for painting over the top of. I can see already that here. See, that's already flaking straight off. So what I'm gonna actually have to do is get this taped masking film, and that should actually have that uh, treated side on it so that the masking uh, so the paint's not going to flake off the masking. But either way, for now, I'm just going to go away and I'm going to leave that for half an hour, let that dry right out. I did give it a quick heat gun, but I'm still going to give it a little bit of time. Um, I'll come back, give that a scuff, and give it another final prep sole down, and then we'll start getting some colour on. So I've decided to leave it there for this video there, Gunners. Next video, we'll be getting in there and we'll get it all sprayed up. And the fourth and final video, we'll be doing a little bit of polishing on it. So I hope you guys have been enjoying this video series and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching. This has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.